Welcome back to another video. This time around we'll be talking about confidence interval. To break this down to you, we need to first talk about what an interval is. An interval is a range of values. For example, if we have this little range here, let's say from 0 0.60 to 0 0.80, 60 and 80, we have all these range of values in the middle, right? The confidence interval, it helps tell us where we think the true population mean is going to lie within a specified probability. Within, for example, 95%, where we're in 99%, we are, for example, 95% sure, if we use a Z of 1.96, we are 95% sure that the true population mean is somewhere between these two points. Now, how did they figure this out? It's very simple, actually. They start with the sample mean. Let's say they got a sample mean of 70. They then use this formula, x bar plus minus z into standard error. And if you recall what standard error is, I'm just going to write this up here so you don't forget it. It's going to be standard deviation to sigma over radical n, n being the number of people in your sample. So uh, you can already see that, that you know they're going to they write this for you here as sample size increases confidence interval becomes narrower. So as this number goes up, the overall number you're going to get is going to go down. And this should make sense to you. So the overall confidence interval is going to shrink. So it's very simple. We're taking 70, and then we're, we're adding two standard errors to it this way, and then we're adding two standard errors to it this way. Now, we can't just add one standard error, so we have this z here to play a big role. This z will tell us how many standard errors do we add. Now, if we add exactly 1.96 of those standard errors, and we, we add them this way, and then we subtract them this way, we're going to get exactly 95%. We're going to get 95% here. And what that tells us is that the true population mean, we are 95% sure that it's going to land somewhere in here. Somewhere within this range, we are 95% sure it's going to land somewhere here. So that's huge. We now can, can pretty much be 95% confident that the true population mean is somewhere between 60 and 80. So again, to find the confidence interval, you add the sample mean to z times standard error, and then you do the sample mean minus z times standard error. Those two points will give you the two points of your confidence interval. And based on if you use the z of 1.96, then you are 95% sure where the population mean is, where the true population mean is. And if you use the z of 2.58, you are 99% sure where the true population mean is. One trick they sometimes like to do is they, they tell you uh, the sample mean has a 95% chance of being in, in the confidence interval. This is incorrect. The sample mean is going to be always, always, always in the center of that confidence interval. They're basically trying to trick you by putting sample mean instead of population mean. The sample mean is always, always, always going to be in the center of a confidence interval because that is the point where you're diverging both ways based on your based on your z and your standard error. So again, the sample mean is 100% going to be involved or included into the confidence interval. So for now, we finished this entire part. We talked about what the confidence interval is. We talked about the formula and, and how, you know, as, as your sample size increases, the confidence interval narrows. And they generally prefer using 95% confidence interval because if you watch our, our video on hypothesis testing, you pretty much know that we're always going to correspond alpha to 0.05. So what is the opposite of 0.05? And it's 95%. That's why they love using 95%. But this pretty much explains to you the, the importance of confidence interval. It can help us understand where the true population mean is. A more important difference is that it helps us eyeball whether there is statistical significance or not. So one of the things people usually do is they, they interpret a sort of study. They have this sort of graph, and, and you know they can have different sort of versions of it. But let's say this was 0, and let's say this is our confidence interval from this point to this point. Basically, since this is our sample, and since this sample's confidence interval is not touching zero, then we can automatically say it is statistically significant. Okay, this is a quick, quick, quick way just to eyeball it. You see this confidence interval, it doesn't touch zero, then hey, you're sure it's statistically significant. Now, it's not that simple. This is only if you're dealing with means. So if you, for example, uh, have a 95% confidence interval for a mean difference between two different variables, which includes zero, then there is no significant difference and, and you don't reject the null hypothesis. This is only for, for the mean, the mean. If you're talking about a confidence interval for the relative risk or odds ratio, then this is different. You're not, you're not using zero. The only difference 
differences you're using one so so if it doesn't touch zero but touches for example one then it's not statistically significant again you have to understand this if you're talking about means then this number that you're relying on is going to be zero if you're relying on odds ratio or relative risk you, the number you're focusing on is one does it touch one or does it not touch one if it touches zero but doesn't touch one it is still statistically significant for example let's say we're talking about relative risk and let's say this is zero and let's say this is one if we have a confidence interval that looks something like this, and recall we're doing relative risk, notice how it is crossing 0, but it is not crossing 1. So this would actually be statistically significant. So this is the importance of it. You just see a confidence interval, then you basically compare it to 0. If you're talking about means, you compare it to 1 if you're talking about, for example, the odds ratio relative risk. If they include the value we're interested in, it is not statistically significant, therefore we reject the alternate hypothesis, we accept the null hypothesis. And if it doesn't include the number we're interested in, we reject the null hypothesis, we accept the alternate hypothesis. And this is pretty much just what we said here. If they do not overlap, then you know there there is statistically significance. If they do overlap, then there is usually no significant difference. I hope you benefited from this short video about confidence interval. Consider liking and subscribing, and as always, thanks for watching.